Coming up on today's episode, an awesome bargain surround sound receiver. What does DVDO do? Black out your living room and the Blu-ray releases for the week of May 3rd, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Verizon Droid Apps, Squarespace, and Gamefly. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online, satellite cable, over the air. If it is in HD, we like it. Yes. Big news. Big news. HD Nation viewer yeah. Wayne spotted something we missed last week. Blu-ray.IGN.com is reporting that Star Wars Blu-rays are in the works. Lucasfilm director of fan relations, Steve Sansweet, said, quote, we have been at work for a couple of years working on... I won't call it the ultimate set because we keep finding stuff, but a very full set of all six movies on Blu-ray with lots of extra material. We're finding all kinds of scenes from dailies that have never been seen before. Beyond all of those things that you know about, there are some real treasures. Ooh. Okay, it's probably a given that they'd ha that they'd be coming out with a Blu-ray version of yeah. this movie. And we have no idea which versions of the movie will actually be encoded and put on the final discs, but I'm still pretty <laughs> excited. I, I really... I'm hoping they include just the original. The one that we saw when we were children. That the unmolested our... version <laughs> of 4, 5, and 6. That, that would be my favorite. But I'm not Bring me that. the Muppets, not the renderings. Oh, just, boy. Just old school. Yeah, old school would be yeah. nice. There is no ordering date on Amazon yet, but the Digital Bits rumor mill has well, rumors from industry sources that October 2011 is when you can expect the giant box set. Meanwhile, Theo emailed, do you have any comments about this comic? He's talking about XKCD.com, episode 732. <sighs> it baffles me that people find HDTV impressive. This is a line from one of my favorite cartoonists ever, Randall Monroe, and in, in this episode of XKCD, he thoroughly mocks two of my favorite things, HDTV and 24 frames per second playback. Hey, and when you scroll your mouse <laughs> over the cartoon, uh, the title text reads, quote, we're stuck with blurry, jittery, slow panning 24 frame per second movies forever because thanks to 60 frame per second home video, people associate high frame rates with camcorders and cheap sitcoms and thus, think good frame rates look quote unquote fake, unquote, double unquote. Randall, I trust your <laughs> math, I trust your physics, I love your humor, I can live without the puns, but 24 frames per second is how movies look in the theater when you leave your room and see them on a big screen, which is why we think good frame rates look fake, and yes. Well, the refresh rate is 48 or 72 hertz in the theater though. Hmm. to get technical. But the whole comment about PC resolution being HD, and we've had that for like ever on the computer side. Absolutely. Things. Yeah, that was kind of like a, but that's the small screen. Yeah. And you gotta stretch that out and make it bigger. Though. And you probably haven't been watching movies on that screen that look particularly good scaled up to that high resolution HD, well, well computer screen. Better because, software. Yeah, well, <laughs> the high def content didn't exist. Oh, by the way, Avatar <laughs> sold 6.7 million copies in the first <laughs> four, first days. four days it was out. On disc. 2.7 million of them were Blu-rays. That's a lot of Blu-ray movies. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, actually. But no 3D. The, the people that track the, the, the sales yeah. were like, Crazy Heart was number two, amazing Jeff Bridges movie. I think, it really, I think they sold like less than 5% of the DVDs that Avatar sold. Oh. Avatar is crushing it. Um, it's also crushing a lot of people. Uh, it's been a bit, well, it's, it's, it's hurting people. A lot of people bought the disc, ran home, put it in your Blu-ray player, and found that it didn't work. A couple of you wrote in about that. Fox claims it's users that haven't updated their firmware. However, a lot of the people who have updated their firmware and still found that the Blu-ray disc of Avatar won't play claim it's a problem with the DRM Fox dropped onto the disc. <laughs> I'd be curious to see how many players haven't been updated in so long and will never be updated again that can't play some of the latest titles. That's yeah. going to be an ongoing issue we'll have with lots of Blu-ray players out there. <laughs> Continuing on the hardware news this week, Denon celebrated its 100th anniversary with a slate of new products, including 10 new AV receivers for the big box stores. Anybody on a budget will want to check out the $250 AVR391. The 5.1 channel box has four HDMI 1.4A repeater inputs, decent DACs, and an on-screen display that will show up over that HDMI connection. Yay! Denon claims the standby power of the amp is below a tenth of a watt. Like a lot of good products nowadays, that is really impressive. Yeah. 
Denon has another six receivers coming out, including a couple with Anchor Bay decoding engines, along with a pair of 3D-ready DLNA-compliant Blu-ray players at $399 and $799, respectively. The higher price model adds Anchor Bay's decoding and Burr Brown 32-bit analog audio DAX. Ooh. That should, for those analog lovers out there, that should sound pretty good sweet. good for the music. Very good for the music. Warmth. Time to thank one of our sponsors, people, Squarespace. It's a publishing system. It's a hosting system. It's for anybody that wants an amazing website with minimal coding. If you can drag a mouse, you can build a website with Squarespace and a pretty powerful one, too. It's really easy to move an existing website over. If you're a WordPress blogger, type pad, movable type, you can import those with a special tool. It's going to grab your posts, your comments, your tags, your authors, and your media. And it's going to bring over the URL structure of your existing site and map everything over so your all your old posts will still be findable. This is good. It means all the links are going to work. You want to try it out? It's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. It's pretty powerful. And we got a 10% discount for you off the lifetime of your order. It's not going to happen when you first go to the, the, the Squarespace.com site and check it out. It's going to happen a couple weeks later. They're going to be like, pay some money or go away when you do. If you pay the money, do us a favor. Type in HD Nation. You're going to get 10% off the lifetime of your order, and you're going to help keep us bringing the show to you every week. Check it out, people. Squarespace.com. I've been enjoying HBO's Pacific. It's graphic. It's emotional. The acting is good. So is the writing. The effects are excellent, and it's a really worthy translation of some of the seminal autobiographies from the Pacific Theater of World War II. Unfortunately, when the battles start, it's also full of compression artifacts like the one you're seeing on your screen right now. I know DirecTV is all MPEG-4 now and bringing new satellite bandwidth online, but dang, I can't wait for the Blu-ray if I can bear watching Sledge go through the Pacific campaign again. Um, I gotta say, it's, I mean, it's, compression artifacts must die. And now I'm curious HD. to see if you would see the same <laughs> thing on, well, you can't get HBO over the air, right? but if you could get the full, like, almost 20 megabit MPEG-2 stream from your cable company. I'd like to do an A-B comparison. It makes me want to subscribe to Maybe HBO for a month. Yeah, you just, should subscribe to HBO for a month. Because I can dump that content off. We can do a side-by-side -side comparison. record it, do side-by-sides. Mm. Okay, we're, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> we also had a, a couple people pointed out a couple weeks ago we talked about somebody was comparison shopping. Should I go with this new fiber optic television service? Should I go with cable? Should I go with satellite? One of the things we may not have made as clear as we should have is if you can, go to the cable company, go to a neighbor who has direct TV, go to the place where they're selling fiber, and look at the channels you care about and see whether or not the programming looks good. Because I've noticed regional cable, basically cable companies are huge, and a lot of times different regions do things differently. So what looks awful in our neighborhood from giant company X may look okay in your neighborhood. So definitely, if you can, go and see that stuff side by side with your very own eyes as close together as possible. Talk to your neighbors. Yeah. They'll let you in. They'll let you mess with their gear. No problem. <laughs> mine, mine do, at least. They want me to come in. And they usually get Please. free fixing. <laughs> free advice. There you go. Robert made the TV work. It looks beautiful. On a classic movie note, High Def Digest has the word from Warner Brothers that two great classic movies are coming to Blu-ray. The film school and AFI favorite, Citizen Kane. This is the this ah, this is one of the key movies in cinema. And one of my favorite movies from watching with my dad, Sword and Sandals classic, Ben-Hur. They're both getting restored like a full-on ground-up restoration, but Ben-Hur is actually slated to receive the ultimate collector's edition treatment. We're talking about the stuff they did for The Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, and Woodstock last year, according to Warner Brothers' Jeff Baker. I'm excited. When am I going to see my beloved Rosebud in HD? And, of course, that epic chariot scene in Ben-Hur? 2011. Ooh. Actually, next year. Hey. Not that long. Shall we take a look at what's what new? What about right now? I know, I know. I'm still getting caught up in so many movies. It's crazy. Anyway, hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of May 3rd, 2010. First up, Saving Private Ryan. We hinted at this a few weeks ago with our top five World War II movies in HD, and it's finally here. Directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Tom Hanks, Matt Damon, and more, this classic film won five Academy Awards, including Best Director and Best Cinematography. It's the part of Paramount Sapphire series, which means it'll be released in a two-disc set with tons of extras. Those extras include a 25-minute documentary with the cast and crew, another documentary narrated by Tom Hanks about World War II combat photographers, and several other featurettes covering topics like the recreation of Omaha Beach, the boot camp that the cast went through, and Spielberg's interest in World War II and lots more. This should be a good one, and I cannot wait to get my hands on a copy. Next up, Dr. Zhivago. 
1965 three-hour epic stars Alec Guinness way before anyone had heard of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this 45th anniversary edition comes in book form. Extras include an introduction by Omar Sharif, the making of the film, vintage featurettes, and even an eight-song CD sampler of the Oscar-winning score. <laughs> Also released this week, a limited keepsake edition of Dirty Dancing. This release includes a digital copy and all the extras from previous editions, as well as a few bonuses like a Patrick Swayze tribute, a never before released stills gallery, and writer's shooting script. Plus, Dirty Dancing live in concert. If you're still getting over the loss of Patrick Swayze, this one might help soothe the pain. Next up, Hamlet from the BBC, starring David Tennant as Hamlet himself, with Patrick Stewart as King Claudius. It aired in the UK on the BBC Two Network last December, and here in the US on PBS last week. So if you want to see Doctor Who and Captain Picard duke it out, Shakespeare style, this is a must see. Also released this week, Tetro, Electra, Escape from LA, K-19, The Widowmaker, Leap Year, 2009's Nine, Preacher's Kid, and Tooth Fairy. Rising Droid apps have access to every tool the phone has, including the compass, GPS, accelerometer, and image capture, unlike some phones I know. And for those who love watching their shows on the go, a video player. The power of the Android apps allows them to run in the background for true multitasking support, background alerts, and enhancement of each other's performance. Verizon's dominant network and 3G coverage create an unparalleled mobile data solution to keep you connected to the web and allow you to run heavy, data-rich features anytime, anywhere. With the ever-expanding Android market, you'll always be able to quickly download the apps you need to get the most out of your Droid. So if you're looking for some apps to get some awesome video playback, don't miss top picks like the Discovery Channel app, TV.com, E! Online, and more, all of which offer the most recent video content direct to your Droid. Just head over to DroidDoes.com to find new apps for your Verizon Droid. Scott writes in, I would like to see a review about the DVDO Edge or DVDO iScan Duo. It's something I'm thinking of getting if it works as advertised. All right, Scott. Now, everybody out there, if you've never heard of Anchor Bay's DVDO boxes before, it's a box for your media totem, that stack of boxes that feed your TV. It does video scaling, switching, and quite a bit more. Robert, you actually own Anchor Bay's DVDO Edge, don't you? I do, and I use it all the freaking time. It's awesome, I have to say. I use it for a few things. A few things I like. We'll start off with the price. It's 500 bucks. You can get that online. That's actually down quite a bit from the 799 initial list price when it mm -hmm. came out last year. It features six HDMI inputs, two component video inputs, three optical audio inputs, a coaxial audio input as well, and it provides HDMI output. That's its primary output, but it also includes an HDMI audio only output if you want to just run that separately to an AVR. Cool. Backlit universal remote. And I have to say, one of, the, one of my favorite things about the product really is the prioritized input switching. That's probably what I use it for the most as a massive switch. What does prioritized input switching mean? It means when I, I can set it up so that when I turn on a specific device, it will switch to that automatically. And then when I turn that device off, it'll switch right back. Oh. Like in this case, my, my primary box would be like my cable satellite or cable box. Sure. So the TiVo. Whenever the TiVo is... Whenever something else besides the TiVo comes on, it's like, oh, you probably want to watch that device or look at that device. Right. So I have it set up to automatically switch to the things. Like my, I turn my PS3 on, it'll switch to that automatically. I turn on any other device, but when I turn those devices off, it goes right back to whatever's at the top of my list, which happens to be my cable box. So is it more of a switcher or is it more, you know, upscaling technology? Because like we talked about the Denon receivers earlier in the show where the, the expensive ones actually totally. are using Anchor Bay's technology, the same stuff totally. as in the DVDO. Same thing is in this box as well. It contains all of their, their high-end technology for video processing, including scaling, resizing the picture, uh, adjusting things like picture quality, like mm -hmm. brightness, color, contrast. Pretty much all the picture controls you could ask for are in this box as well. So if you don't want to manipulate the display device, you can do it from within this product instead. Also, things like uh, video noise reduction, mm -hmm. edge enhancement, picture enhancements, other features to play with as well. Do you use this to basically handle all of the video scaling and processing instead of the stuff that's inside your Blu-ray player and inside your HDTV? I really try to. I try to provide a native output to this and then to the DVDO Edge and then have it then scale and process all that video into something that's compatible for my TV, which I'm using a 1080p LCD monitor or LCD television with um, 60 hertz input. And so it basically takes 
everything that I've just mentioned and converts all of that to that 1080p60 output for the TV. Dealing with things like frame rate conversions, mm -hmm. uh, interlaced progressive scan video input, right. things like that. It, just, it does all of that and it does it really well. Arguably does it better than any other device within my video food chain. <laughs> and probably within most people's price range. Signal information and the aspect ratio control. Oh yeah. I mean, let me give you a quick demo. Actually, for signal information, this is one thing. Any device I can plug into this, mm -hmm. I can hit the info button. Like in this case, we have an older Panasonic DVD player running as a source device into here. I can hit info, and it pops up. Oh, in this case, I'm looking at the output information, but I can just scroll up. It shows me the input. It tells me the signal format. This is a 480i signal with component video output from this player into the DVD edge. Nice. It tells me the color space being used, what aspect ratios, uh, is it currently being progressive scan output or not where the audio is coming from, that kind of information. And it can also keep scrolling down. There's the picture controls, <laughs> output status. It tells me what it's connected to right. and what it's you know, receiving and what it's doing with it. But aspect ratio control, too. If there's a problem with anything I'm looking at, like say I bought the wrong DVD movie and it's that, that letterboxed and pillar barred widescreen content that I just despise. Now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this is stretched horizontally. You can tell he's oompa loompa a little bit. Yeah. But there's here. There's the letterbox. There's our pull. I know this is. Either the player was set up for 4x3 and never changed, but anyway, here, one button, boom. I can pull it back into 4x3. <laughs> but look at that, I'm still, I'm wasting quite a bit of the picture, right. so then I can even do what they call a panoramic mode, stretch that out to fill it. So, and I can even do this on a per pixel level if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get a TV show that's just driving me nuts, and I'll just, you know, stretch it out to fill the screen just the way I want it, and I can put it right back to the way it was. Well, at least how it was from the player itself. <laughs> how it was done wrong by the player <laughs> itself. They've done a lot of updates, firmware updates. For the Definitely. Edge. Since its release last year, mm -hmm. this product's changed quite a bit. And a few of the things that have been improved since that time, they've added a lot of granularity to the controls, like for doing your picture adjustments and things like that. Rather than it being very chunky, each move moves a lot in terms of what changes on the screen. Now it's very fine control, which is awesome. Mosquito noise reduction. Uh, that's fine little artifacts that you'll see, particularly in flat colored surfaces, namely like block letters and things on the screen. They look like little, little, little squigglies, really. And that kind of noise reduction has been improved quite a bit. They've also added uh, automatic chroma air correction. Mm -hmm. That's if you get the jagged edges along hard colored edges. Really noticeable when you scale things up to large size screens, particularly with projection systems and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It helps to be able to address those kind of errors better. They also added support for true, uh, Dolby True HD and DTS HD master audio formats. Oh, wow. They've integrated that. Also, improved compatibility with PC game consoles, or PCs and game consoles. And <laughs> scale that Wii. So, yeah, like I said, I also have my uh, home theater PC running right into this as well, and uh, it handles it just fine. What won't it do? Y you're not going to turn low-grade standard depth video into something that looks like a Blu-ray movie, uh, right. or a well-authored Blu-ray movie, I It will say. make it look as, it's gonna scale it better than anything else that most of us can afford. Though, totally, right? if, if, if you notice some slight block artifacts mm -hmm. in your signal from, say, your cable or satellite subscription in a particular program, it could help adjust things like that. If you're dealing with things like mosquito noise and text on screen, <laughs> that drives me a little crazy, I can dial that down. What about giant swaths of compression artifacts from satellite no, compression? No, when I get break, I have a channel at home. One particular <laughs> channel breaks up constantly, and there's only so much you can do, but if the whole picture's breaking up, don't expect miracles. And, and likewise, don't expect a low, a low resolution video source to be scaled up to something that, that looks like a pristine Blu-ray transfer. It's just, that's not gonna happen. But you will be able to make some improvements on just about right. anything you can throw at it, including high def sources. It'll even take things that have been processed by other devices. Say your upscaling DVD player <laughs> that's spitting everything out at 1080p, didn't, right. do, didn't do something right. This will look at that signal, undo it, redo it, and then spit it out correctly. And those kind of things I really appreciate. Ideally though, you want probably the raw native format coming out of your source. And Whenever the, possible. The, if you know what the source material, what format that is, or if your, if your set-top box, like your cable or satellite set-top box, offers a native output mode like TiVo's do, that's what I do. I right. stream that into here. And then it gives me a benefit. In the case of the TiVo in particular, I really love the fact that with that native output, mm -hmm. my TV would take a long time to switch between different video formats like 480i, 720p, and 1080i. Switching between those formats with different shows or the menus in 720p, but the programs in 10, that switching would take a little while. When I set it to native mode and let the DVDO do the switching, it's way faster than the TV. It's almost instantaneous, so that makes my usability just even better. So obviously a thumbs up for this product, especially totally. at the reduced price. Honest 500 bucks though, so I would say if you're going the AVR route, if you haven't bought your AVR receiver okay. yet, you haven't bought your receiver yet, and it's gonna have, you know, it's gonna have Anchor Bay technology in it, 
or, or another right. quality video processing technology, and it's going to handle your switching. Yeah, for a couple hundred dollars more, you can basically get it, this built into an AV receiver. Very close to it, at least. Right. But if this also makes it compatible with all the gear I have, too. Like, I need optical audio out for one older piece of equipment I have, so I'm able to take things like analog, video, or analog audio input, HDMI audio right. input, have that convert to my one optical output for my audio, it keeps all my stuff working together longer, too. So I'd say if 10 is somebody that buys equipment before they feed their children, and one <laughs> is somebody who's like has an HDTV and an over-the-air antenna because they're getting their HDTV one step at a time, I'll call this a 7 on that scale? Definitely. Okay. And also, too, this wouldn't be the product for you if you're dealing with an older set that has only component video high-definition input. Mm -hmm. You really need something that has an HDMI video input in order to use this product properly. You can take analog sources and plug them in, but it really wants to do digital output. Got it. So, something to keep in mind. And now the art of darkness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've repeatedly mentioned in previous shows is the necessity of darkening a room to get the best contrast ratio out of certain HDTVs and projection systems. Ian took that to heart, but has the following question about controlling brightness in a room. He writes, I have a question about blacking out my home theater slash living room. Well, mostly a living room. I get bad glare from the windows, so I want to buy some quality window blinds. What type and brand would cut light the most? I'm talking, I want to turn day into night. One thing I also have to consider is durability versus animals, so I'm leaning toward vertical blinds as they would kind of swing out of the way instead of getting bent. What do you professionals recommend? Signed, Ian. Hey, we're professionals now. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, is there a spousal acceptance factor? And what is the spousal acceptance factor? Um, vertical, that's something for you to consider. Um, best thing to do is, is go look at blinds in a store, whether it's like giant blind store or us or whatever the big box is store. Take a flashlight with you, the brightest flashlight you own. Basically go and shine the flashlight at the, um, the basically, you know, flashlight blinds your face. And you'll notice that a lot of the lighter plastic colors let a lot of it's relatively soft, but it's still going to glow up the room a lot. The metals, the solid woods, a lot of the darker plastics do a much better job of blocking the light. Um, pets and blinds, it sounds like you maybe have floor-to-ceiling windows. Um, it's kind of a trade-off. If you go with curtains, you can get blackout curtains from almost anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they, they will go behind your regular curtains. They are extraordinarily effective at blocking light, at least until you get to the very edges. And if the pets rub up against them and get fur on them, you just wash them. And if the pets get caught up in the vertical blind steel ball connectors at the bottom, you can end up with a really pissed off dog and a lot of broken blinds. Um, um, totally. There are even blackout kits for Windows, yeah. too, that use something as simple as like uh, loop and hook or Velcro style tape mm -hmm. around the edge and then a custom fitted piece of uh, material that goes right. right in there. It just sticks in and completely seals the window off. That Those are also very affordable as well. You don't have to spend a lot there. I've also seen just custom inserts as well that people have used. I don't know if those are handmade or not. I'm guessing handmade. <laughs> but I also know that the guys over at THX showed me, I don't know if this is available yet, but they showed prototypes of new window designs that were that they thought were effective mm -hmm. that could be magnetically sealed along the sides so wow. that when they came down, it would make sure to like engage those and pull them tight so that all light was sealed off. And I thought that was pretty trick. <laughs> pretty neat stuff there. That is pretty trick. Blinds will, you know, blinds will do it. Basically, you know, if you measure the blinds so they either overlap the window or fit in as tight as you can handle it inside the window frame, that's going to block, like, 80% of your light. I'm gonna I'm gonna Probably. pull a number out of my hat. Curtains that go beyond the edges of the windows and as close to the floor as possible. If if it's a floor to ceiling window uh, or you know floor to wherever height window, um, you're gonna get about 90% of the blight. If you you know if you have it so there's like edge curtains and you can put magnets down there to put the the edges of the the blackout uh, drapes um, or Velcro like you're mentioning before. That can that's gonna be as close to 100%. Uh, at least as close you're going to get without looking like a tweaker to your neighbors and you know gluing the <laughs> aluminum looking, foil looking around the online window. too. It seemed like any reputable blind manufacturer who's selling online right. will have a checkbox option for blackout, and that that's just another thing when you're doing that. Like you mentioned, using the test with a flashlight. But if you're looking for that level. Make sure, do a little hunting online to see what's there as well. Ian, I hope that helps you out. Everybody out there in the audience in the HD Nation, do us a favor. Email us your ideas for blacking out windows, hdnation at revision3.com. Right now, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. If you haven't heard of them, they are the largest online video game rental service out there. We're talking about 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. 
The plan starting at $15.95 a month. Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time. You keep them for as long as you like. Till you finish the game, till you get bored with the game, whatever. It doesn't matter because you know what? There's no late fees, no due dates, and the shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back. Gamefly is going to send you the next available game on your list. It's just that easy. And if you like the game you're playing, just click Keep It on the Gamefly website. The game is yours at a discounted price. And of course, Gamefly is going to mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Now, here's the deal, folks. HG Nation fans, you can get a two-week free trial, but you got to go to www.gamefly.com slash HDNation. Some restrictions do apply. See the site for details. Do us a favor. You like the show? Go check out our sponsors, like Gamefly.com slash HDNation. Once in a while, we get a question that really makes us go, hmm, like this one from Vishal who wrote in, a good friend of mine recently lent me his Blu-ray disc of The Hangover. Even though I only intend to watch the movie and not make any copies, I was wondering if that's considered piracy since he's the owner of the disc. It's okay, Vishal. I can lend Robert a disc. Yeah. Robert can lend me a disc. As we often do. We can resell <laughs> discs if we've purchased them legally. It's, you know, once once you've bought the disc, it's pretty much, you know, as long as you don't do the stuff at the beginning, like, you know, play it in a crowded place like it's a movie theater or a bar or something, which I'm not even going to get into. Because at what point, how many people in your living room becomes a public performance is not <laughs> something I want to start debating. It's okay to lend discs. What is not okay is ripping the content of a disc and sharing it online. It's, it's decrypting that information, that encrypted information right. that's on the disc, undoing that encryption in order to do something else with it. That's technically where you're breaking. You're crossing the line right there, and that's yeah. what you shouldn't do. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Now, you mentioned, right, you, you, you're not planning on ripping the disc. That's fine. You know, Mr. Heron and I have been known to take the content of discs we legally own and transfer them to our hard drives so we can stream them over our home networks. That is technically illegal, according to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act here in the United States, dot, 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 and perhaps throughout the rest of the world if some certain copyright agreements and counterfeiting agreements that are being pushed by uh, some of our legislatures are legi Well, basically, our government's trying to basically push the DMCA legality onto the entire world. You probably don't care about that. What you do care about, though, look, if, if you're making, there's, there's actually some murmurs in the court in some of the recent decisions that it's actually okay for you to have copyright copies of content you've legally purchased. Nobody's going to fight that out to the Supreme Court anytime soon. But if you're really worried about the government kicking down your door and dragging your computer out, there's three things you can avoid doing. One, don't design, engineer, or sell software or distribute software that allows people to break copyright and download or basically rip the copyrighted content off of a disk, of thumb drive, of uh, whatever it, it's copy protected under. Two, don't share content that you don't own the rights to. And that's pretty much the only things that you're going to get in trouble for. But and, and you think about that. Who's really going to come after you? It'd be like your ISP for transmitting right. that, that copied data over, over their network. Right. That's where they have to start paying attention and then probably have a good talk with you about it. So it's real easy to avoid these kind of troubles just to do it and stay yeah. out of stay out of the limelight that particular kind of limelight anyway that's not the, that's a spotlight that's not the limelight <laughs> you are totally okay borrowing your friend's disc he is okay borrowing yours it's cool dude do not sweat it do not worry awesome and our final question comes from Martin who asks i'm looking into replacing a dvd player and roku box with a single blu-ray player that supports streaming services like netflix and pandora however I also want the ability to access HD Nation and Revision 3 streaming content. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. I currently <laughs> use my Roku for HD Nation and Netflix. Your website promotes the Roku and TiVo set top boxes, but I don't see any Blu ray players. Any recommendations? Signed, Martin from Georgetown, Texas. Well, we should point out is, is, is we're slowly over time trying to add every possible hardware device on the planet and give you instructions on how to download, basically access your favorite Revision 3 shows and that hardware. It's just the, the, the crew that's doing that is also busy building the website, so there's always sort of a time lag on new hardware. It's a lean, mean operation here. Yeah, I will say probably the easiest way is most of the Blu-ray players that, that can do Pandora and Netflix and other streaming services will also actually allow you to play video that's served somewhere on your network. So if you have a computer that's on your network all the time, basically have it down, you know, throw a podcatcher on there, download the video to a folder, share that folder on your network, let DL, DL and DNLA. I, yeah, DLNA. Thank you. Digital I, Living Network Alliance. It's a hard thing for me to say. I don't know Or why. even just a, anything that supports network streaming of files right. that are on a local storage device of some yeah. kind. Or sneaker net. Put it on a USB key, walk it over to a lot of players, have a USB port on them, just plug it in and watch it that way. 
However, for 2010, there are several new players that I'm, I'm itching to get my fingers on from three main manufacturers, including, and the reason I'm pointing these out is for basically the software features. Uh, there are, all of the players I'm about to mention offer App Store-like environments where you can go pick and choose things, including a Yahoo Widget app, which I know Revision 3 is currently working on to provide One that of our kind of engineers is, 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 is working night and day to get the Yahoo widget up and running for any of the HDTVs and Blu-ray players that support the, wa the Wahoo, the Yahoo. The Yahoo! Wahoo. When widgets. that happens, any of these players are going to be, uh, I'd put them on my short list. And that includes LG's new BD500 mm. series. There's about four models there. It includes also the BX580 model that features 3D output. Sony's new S370, 470, and S570 models, and Sam Samsung's new C-Series, their C7500, <laughs> 6900, and the C60, uh, C5500 models. So cool. pretty much all the new 2010 players, they're really going for that App Store-style right. deal. So you're not locked in. You will be able to do Netflix and Pandora and other apps, but you'll be able to have more control over what type of, of stuff you'll be able to do with Can that Can any of those directly subscribe to RSS feeds, or are they all sort of the widget where you click on it and it streams the video live? It, as far as I know, they're all widget, but I don't see anything that supports uh, where you can put in an RSS link, unfortunately, and then grab that off of a site that supports it. The popcorn but hour boxes. There you go. The popcorn hour boxes have an internal hard drive, and if you attach a, a SATA uh, Blu-ray drive to them, they're also Blu-ray players, so that would actually, it's, it's you know, a little geeky, but it'll definitely do it. And I was pleased too, Sony actually had one of their players, I think it's the 360, I think I just mentioned, or whatever the 3 Series one was, mm -hmm. 199 for a list price, so that's going to be wow. under 200 bucks when it hits the stores, so uh, that'll be a good price for a, a that, featured player like that. With the $250 Denon receiver, that is the heart of a really, really nice, One of One of LG's system. players has a 250 gig hard drive in it too, that got a really good rating, you can rip your CDs to it, put huh. photos and video and then have that just local within the box itself. I'll be curious to see somebody hacks that into larger, larger expanded storage. <laughs> anyway. There you go. Bigger storage. Good options. Hey, everybody. We're conducting a survey to get some additional information about our viewers. We would love your feedback. It's for the sales guys. It's going to help them keep the show going to you. If you got a few minutes to spare, please do us a favor and take the survey at revision3.com slash survey. Again, really, thank you if you can take some time to help us out with that. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As mm -hmm. always, we want to know what you think, so send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. You can also catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hdnation or on Twitter at twitter.com slash hdnation. You can also hang out with other viewers in the HD Nation forums at revision3.com slash forum. And, of course, we got links to all the stuff we talked about in the show in the show notes on every show page at hdnation.tv. You'll also find all the links to subscribe to the show, so if you're not getting the latest episode of HD Nation delivered to your doorstep, what are you waiting for? That's right, people. Subscribe and watch and do us a favor. Tell your friends. Until next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week on HD Nation.